many times I ask my students, methane is polar or non-polar? Or carbon tetrachloride is polar or non-polar? And they get confused. So I thought of clearing this confusion for once and all. After watching this video, you will be able to comprehend the nature of bond polarity for almost any molecule. So let's get started. Electronegativity of an atom is a measure of its power to attract electrons that it is sharing in a covalent bond. It is the capacity of an atom to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself. In a covalent bond AB, if B has greater power to attract the bonding pair of electrons, it is said to be more electronegative. Atoms of different elements have different electronegativities. Electronegativity depends on various factors like atomic number, atomic radius, etc. Here it is important to discuss some basics. Atomic number. The atomic number of an element represented by the letter Z is the number of protons in the nucleus of each atom of that element. Since atoms are neutral, the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons. In a chemical classroom, the proton count will always be equivalent to an atom's atomic number. This value will not change unless the nucleus decays or is bombarded. Here I also want you to know that the mass of an atom is concentrated in its nucleus which is composed of protons and neutrons. The mass number represented by the letter A is defined as the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. The atomic radius of a chemical element is a measure of the size of its atoms. Usually the mean or typical distance from the center of the nucleus to the boundary of the surrounding cloud of electrons. So here you can see the element carbon where there is a nucleus and it contains 6 protons. So the atomic number of carbon that is Z is 6 and it also contains 6 neutrons. So the mass number which is the total number of protons and neutrons it becomes 12. As you can see there are 6 protons there are 6 electrons which are revolving around the nucleus. Coming back to electronegativity. We will now discuss how these factors affect electronegativity. First is atomic number. As now we know it is the magnitude of positive charge on the nucleus. The positively charged protons in the nucleus attract the negatively charged electrons. As the number of protons in the nucleus increases, the electronegativity or attraction for electrons will increase. Therefore, electronegativity increases from left to right in a row in the periodic table. Coming to atomic radius. Down the group, atomic sizes of elements increase due to the increase in the number of shells and thus there is an increased distance between the valence electrons and the nucleus. Or in other words, you can say there is a greater atomic radius. Hence, nuclear attractions on the shared pair of electrons decreases and thus the electronegativity decreases. The original electronegativity scale developed in the 1930s by Linus Pauling was based on the measurements of the strengths of covalent bonds between different elements. Pauling arbitrarily set the electronegativity of fluorine at 4 although today it has been refined to 3.98. Thereby he created a scale in which all elements have values between 0 and 4. These are the electronegativity values assigned to each element on Pauling scale. Looking at it we can predict the bond polarity of any bond. Let's find how. First check the electronegativity values of the elements which are forming the bond. If the difference in their electronegativity values is less than 0.4, the bond is purely covalent and nonpolar. If the difference is between 0.4 to 1.8, it surely has some polar character, 
but the bond basically is covalent so we can say the bonds in this range are polar covalent and if the difference exceeds 1.8 the bond is ionic in nature you can safely apply this rule in most of the cases to find out the nature of bond a covalent bond as you know is formed by sharing of two electrons the electron pairs shared between two atoms are not necessarily shared equally the bond polarity is a useful concept for describing the sharing of electrons between atoms within a covalent bond a nonpolar covalent bond is one in which the electrons are shared equally between two atoms a polar covalent bond is the one in which one atom has a greater attraction for the electrons than the other atom if this relative attraction is great enough then the bond becomes ionic bond a molecule is said to be a polar molecule if it satisfy following two conditions first is the molecule must contain one or more polar bonds now you know which bonds are said to be polar the difference in electronegativity values of the elements forming the bond should be between 0.4 to 1.8 and second condition is the polar bonds must be so directed that there are separate centers of positive and negative charges in the molecule let's take an example of carbon dioxide it has two polar carbon oxygen bonds but still the molecule is not polar because the co2 molecule is linear and the centers of two negative charges lies at the center of positive charge that is the carbon atom that is why the molecule becomes non polar but consider the case of water molecule it has two polar oxygen hydrogen bonds the centers of positive charge is between the hydrogen atoms and as the center of positive and negative charges do not coincide water molecules are polar similarly consider the case of carbon tetrachloride it has four polar ccl bonds but still the molecule is non polar because the centers of positive and negative charges coincide hence making the molecule non polar polar molecules behave like small magnets and they possess a dipole moment the dipole moment mu is the product of magnitude of the charges and the distance between the charges it can be derived by equation dipole moment mu is equal to charge into distance molecules which do not have a dipole moment are called non polar molecules polar molecules have a great attraction for each other and thus they have characteristic physical and chemical properties also if placed in an electric field non polar molecules orient themselves randomly whereas polar molecules orient themselves so that their negative ends point towards the positive plane and their positive ends point towards the negative plane so let's check out some more compounds for example hcl as you can see the bond is clearly polar because the difference in electronegativity is 3 minus 2.1 is 0.9 it lies between 0.4 to 1.8 and also there is clear charge separation it has dipole moment so the molecule is polar same is the case with ammonia it has polar bonds nh bonds are polar chloroform ch bonds are non polar but the ccl bond is polar so presence of one polar bond which has clear charge separation and dipole moment the result chloroform is polar but consider boron trifluoride bf bond is very polar actually ionic 4 minus 2 2 is the electronegativity difference and there are three polar bonds but look at the geometry the net charges are cancelling out each other so having three polar bonds but still the molecule is non polar same is the case with carbon tetrachloride i hope you have got the concept so friends have you learned to identify the polar and non polar compounds i hope you say yes if you found the video helpful do give it a big thumbs up i always try my best to deliver such interesting and useful content so if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing see you in the next video where i'll be discussing about hydrogen bonding in detail keep watching Thank you. Bye-bye.